great session guys perfect thank you so um today what we're going to be going through um is bearings and geometric problems um but before we start um with that session we're going to do a quick recap on last week's session on finding the circumference of a circle so um, just a quick recap. So there are two formulae that you can use to find the circumference of a circle. You could either use C equals two pi R or you could use C equals pi D. So R is your radius and D is your diameter. Now remember your radius is half of your um, diameter anyways. So realistically, both of these um, formulae are exactly the same. Um, to find the arc length, so if you have a sector, just that little part of um, the circumference of the circle, that little arc um, shaped curve, to work out how long that is, um, it's called the arc length. And what you should do is you should take the angle from the sector, divide it by 360 and multiply it by the circumference of your entire circle. Um, and also we went through um, some area of certain 2D shapes as well during that session. So we looked at the area of the triangle, which is A equals half base times height. And um, we looked at the area of a trapezium, A equals half um, times A plus B multiplied by your height. And the area of a parallelogram, which is just um, base times height, just like a rectangle. So hopefully that's just a quick recap of what we did um, last week. We will go through an example question over here. So um, I know that some of you are finding it a little bit difficult to understand um, how to work out the arc length or work out the perimeter of a sector. So we're gonna go through this example question and hopefully it will clear it up. So here we want to calculate the perimeter of um, this sector that they've given us. And they've asked us to give, us, um, to give our answer to three significant figures. So let's get um, started. First of all, to work out the perimeter of this shape, we first of all need to work out the arc length, so this length here, work out how long this is. Then once we've worked that out, we also need to add this length and this length as well. Because remember the perimeter is the length around the entire shape, not just a part of it. So let's start by um, trying to work out what is the the um, length of the arc. So remember the formula for arc length is you take um, the angle, you divide it by 360 and then you multiply it by the entire um, circumference of the circle. So imagine we drew the entire circle, 2 pi r would be the circumference of the entire circle. So we just want that little part um, first of all. So the angle here is 120 and we're going to divide it by 360 and then multiply it by 2, multiply it by pi and multiply it by the radius. Now here the radius is 6 centimetres because it's a line that goes from the centre of the circle all the way to the edge. So let's um, put this into the calculator and work out um, what our arc length will be. So 120 divided by 360, multiplied by 2, multiplied by pi, and multiplied by 6. And you should get 12.566. And it goes on a little bit. It is a long decimal number. Now, if you remember from um, last week's session, I did say try not to round your numbers too early. The reason why is because your final answer will be a little bit off if you round too early. You won't get an accurate answer. So what you should do instead is either leave your answer to about four or five decimal places, or what you can do is just press the A and S button on your calculator and it'll store um, your answer. And then you do the rest of your calculations using that and you will get an accurate answer. So we've worked out now the length of the arc. Now all we need to do is add this length here and add this length here. And then we've got our, um, we've got our perimeter. So remember, click the A and S button and then you're gonna add to your answer six centimetres plus another six centimetres. 
And when you do this, um, you should get 24.566 and it goes on a little bit as well yeah now and um, we're still not done yet because we have to leave our answer to three significant figures so 24.566 to three significant figures is 24.6 and we also have to leave our units now here they told us um, our radius is in centimeters so our perimeter will also be in centimeters and then we're done that is the perimeter of a sector so hopefully that makes um, a little bit more sense to everyone and um, even to those of you who didn't manage to see last week's session as well hopefully um you understand how to um work out the perimeter of a sector so let's move on to today's session so we're going to be doing bearings and geometric problems and um, and in today's session, what we're going to be learning is how to measure and draw bearings, how to answer problem solving questions and how to solve geometric problems. And also to answer um, someone's question. Yes, we will do a quiz at the end of the session as well. So um, bearings, what are bearings? So bearings tell us um, which direction we should go in. Um, ships usually use um, bearings to navigate um, where they're going and how to get to their destination. All bearings are, are they are um, angles. They tell us um, how far away from the north line are we traveling? Yeah, and they're always measured in degrees. So there's three rules we have to remember about bearings. Number one, they always, always must go from the north line. We're always measuring from the north line and we're always going clockwise. So we're always going in this direction. And the final thing, which a lot of people do forget, is you have to measure your um, angles and leave them to three digits. Yeah, so if you had something like 90 degrees, you would say 090 degrees, as long as you leave it um, to three digits. So here's an example. So north would be 000, three digits. Um, obviously north is north, so you're not um, any degrees away from it. Um, 90 degrees would be east, because that's to the right angle of north. And it's, um, if you go clockwise, it would be 90 degrees, but you leave it as 090 because it has to be three digits. And then you can see the other examples as well for southwest, northeast, southeast, and so on. Um, the important ones to remember is, first of all, um, you do need to remember how to, um, you do need to remember what a compass tells you. So you need to remember in order north east south west yeah um a good example of how loads of people even myself remember the different parts of the compass is never eat shredded wheat so north east south west um also you need to remember your um very popular degrees so you need to remember 90 degrees 180 degrees and 270 degrees and um, those are really important. So, um, some people can't hear me. Um, I'm not too the sound sure. sound is fine. Yeah? I mean, um, if you're having trouble hearing Evelyn, then it's probably on your end. So I always recommend just leaving the session and rejoining and that should help. Okay, perfect. Um, so, um, what we are going to do is look at a example question now quickly. So let me zoom out. Okay, so here um, we have um, these points A and B. Now the question is work out the bearing of B from A. So one thing that I would like to point out as well is that a lot of students um, get very confused with bearings, not because they don't understand it, just because they don't read the question properly. So I would always say underline the different points and understand what is coming from where, first of all, before you start trying to answer the question. So if I get the pen quickly, so here, and this would be the part that I would want you to underline. The reason why is because some people would read this and see that B is first. So you're measuring the bearing 
of A from B. You're not. It says from A. So that means that A is our starting position and we want to work out what is the degrees um, away from A that B, the position that B is in. So what we should always do is um, you should go clockwise from the north line at A and work out um, what is the degrees of um, this sort of angle going round all the way back to this line between B and A. So first of all, we know, or everyone should be familiar with angles um, on a straight line. We know that angles on a straight line is 180 degrees. So this part here is 180 degrees. Now they've told us that this remaining part over here is 40 degrees. So the entire angle will be 180 plus 40. And 180 plus 40 degrees is 220 degrees. And that would be your final answer. That is the bearing of B from A. So first of all, always measure clockwise from the north um, from the north line and always make sure you know where your starting point is. Otherwise, you will get the wrong angle and you will get the question wrong. So um, let's go through measuring bearings then. So to measure bearings, as I said before, always know where your starting point is. That's, um, that's an important part. Then you need to draw the north line of the, of the, on the starting point, sorry. So all that is, is just a straight line going up from the point where you're starting. Then what you'd need to do next is draw a line between the two points. So your starting point and your destination. And then measure the angle clockwise from the north line that goes all the way around to that second line that you drew and write your angle as a three digit bearing. So let's go through um, another example and hopefully it will make a lot more sense uh, when you see how to do it. Um, so usually for bearings questions, you do need a compass. Um, obviously I'm on the computer, so it's gonna be a bit hard to show you how to use a compass, but. Um, always, always measure bearings with, um, sorry, a, protract a protractor, I'm saying compass, I mean a protractor. Um, it's really important to get accurate readings because in the exam, they will expect you to give as accurate as possible. So let's um, have a look at this question then. So what are the bearings of plane F and plane G from the airport? So the airport is our um, starting point and we want to work out um, in what direction is G from the airport and is what direction um, plane F from the airport. So the first thing to do is to draw the north line at the starting point. So draw a straight line going up from the starting point. And um, also it's good to label it. So label this north. So north is always going straight up. Then the next thing that you need to do is draw a line between your starting point and your destination. So I want to draw a line between um, the airport and plane G. So it's about here. And I also want to draw another line um, between, airport, between the airport and plane F because I want to measure these two bearings. Okay. So um, once you've done that, then the next thing to do is to use your protractor to measure um, the this to measure the angle between the north line and the line linking the airport to plane G, and then do the same thing but for plane F. So measure the angle going from the north line to the airport um, to the line between the airport and plane F as well. So let me um, quickly show you. So we want to work out this angle here. This will be our bearing for um, plane G from the airport. And if I use a different color, if I use green, um, if we measure this one here, this entire angle, because it's between the north line and plane F, this will be your bearing for um, plane F from the airport. So what you should always do is, if I um, quickly draw a demonstration of how to use your protractor, 
always put um, on your projector, you have all your angles sort of going in a semicircle from zero to 180. So here, what I would like you to do um, is put your projector this way, and then you have your different measurements um, going around the protractor and your zero should be over here. So it should be on the north line and then measure from zero, what is the angle going round um, to this line up until G and then do exactly the same thing for F as well. And there it will give you your angles. So you should get something like, um, I get the blue pen back as well. You should get something like for um, the blue angle, about 30 degrees. Now, remember with bearings, you have to leave it to three digits. So you just need to put a zero in front of it. So zero, three, zero degrees, so 30 degrees. Now for um, plane F, so for this angle over here, this one um, is going to be around, say, maybe around 50. Yeah. Now, remember, you again have to leave it to three digits. So it should be zero, five, zero degrees. Yeah. So obviously, when you use a protractor, you'll get a very accurate reading. Um, I don't have a protractor. I can't do it on the computer to show you. But make sure that it's on zero at the north line and measure around from zero. So if you get something like 75, and um, then you know that that's probably, or even something like 180, that's probably not going to be right because you know that angles on a straight line is 180 degrees. Um, and you know where 90 degrees would be as well. So um, if your answer doesn't make sense, try it again. And um, you should find that you should get the right answer once you try it again and um, measure it properly and accurately. <clears throat> So um, let's go to the next part. So for some of you asking, what is a bearing? A bearing is just an angle. A bearing is just an angle telling us um, what direction are we away from the starting point. Yeah. So um, now the next part is um, something else which they expect you to do in your exam. They expect you to draw bearings as well. So what you should always do is draw the north line again first from the starting point. Then you should use your protractor to measure the angle clockwise from that north line and mark the point. Then the next part is to draw a straight line going from um, the starting line that's going through um, the point that you've just marked and it should be the same length as what they've told you. So if I go through an example, examples with these sort of questions help a lot more than just explanations. And um, so let's have a look at this one then. So in the diagram, um, point A marks the position of press switch. Um, the position of Radcliffe is to be marked on the diagram as point B. Now on the diagram, mark with a cross the position of B, given that B is on a bearing of 320 degrees from A, and B is six centimetres from A. So there's two things that we need to draw. First of all, we need to draw um, a point which is 320 degrees from A, and then we have to make sure that actually the distance between B and A is six centimetres as well. So how you should do this is always draw your north line first. The north line is already drawn for us, so we don't need to do that step. The next thing to do is to measure 320 degrees away from the north line. So there's two different ways that you can do it. Now, some people don't have um, a full protractor, so a full circular um, protractor, which can tell you um, all of the different angles in 360 degrees. Um, so what you could do is you could extend your line downwards. <coughs> so if I get um, this one here. So what you could do is extend your line downwards. And um, because you know angles on a straight line um, give you 180 degrees. Yep. So you know, first of all, that here is 180 degrees. 
And now all we need to do is measure the remaining degrees for um, 320 to figure out where this next point is going to be. So we've got 180 degrees, how much is left um, over to work out. So you do 320 minus 180 um, and you should get 140. So now we have to measure 140 degrees from this straight line that we've drawn. Now it will be about here, I would say. So once you've um, measured your full 320 degrees away from your north line, just draw a dot, something like this. Yeah, just to show whereabouts 320 degrees is gonna be. Then the next step to do is to draw a line that goes from the cross of A through this point, which is six centimeters long. So this time you need your ruler. I'll change the color of this line as well. And you want to draw a line from your point, um, from your cross A that goes through this point, which is six centimeters long. So let's say that's about six centimeters. Obviously I'm on a computer. I don't, I can't calculate how long six centimeters is gonna be. But once you've drawn your line um, six centimeters away from A, then the final thing to do is put a cross because that's how they've told you to mark point B and label it point B. That's how you would answer a bearings question. Now, um, that's one way of working out a bearings question. <clears throat> If you have such large angles like this, um, sometimes what some people might do is they might just work out um, what this angle in here would be, which is absolutely fine as well. Because remember, angles around the point is 360 degrees. So to work out what that um, angle would be, that green one that I've just drawn, you would just do 360 minus 320, and then you could measure it that way. I would always say, um, if you're someone who gets confused with bearings and sometimes forgets some of the rules, always stick with the first way how I've done it. Always measure it clockwise from the north line. Otherwise, sometimes it can um, get a little bit more tricky to answer following questions based on bearings if you don't do this and you do get confused. So um, let me check if there's any more questions. Okay, so some people are telling me slow down. All right, cool. That's not a problem. I will repeat what a bearing is as well. So bearing, if I go back to the first um, part, it's just a direction. That's all a bearing is. Let's say you're on a ship and they tell you go 30 degrees. If you look north and then you measure 30 degrees from north, that's your bearing and you go in that direction. That's all a bearing is. There's nothing to, um, it's not too complicated. I think it's just the fact that you're calling it a bearing and not an angle. It is just an angle. Yeah, so it tells you what degrees to go in from the north line and then you go in that direction in a straight line. You don't change direction after that unless they tell you to go and move in a different direction as well. Um, to measure, you just measure around from the north line clockwise. And then to draw, what you should do is, if I go back over here, to draw one, um, you just need to work out what is the degrees from the north line, which is 320 in this case. You measure 320 degrees going around from the north line, and then you draw a straight line going from your starting point through the point that you've just drawn on the diagram, and make sure your line is the length they tell you to draw. Um, hopefully that clears up bearings. <clears throat> that is the last part of bearings that we'll go through um, learning wise today. We will go through some more questions. Hopefully it does make a little bit more sense. Just remember three things. Always remember it's from the north line. Always remember it's clockwise and always remember it's three digits. Um, so hopefully that um, clears it up. So we are going to move on so we can get through the geometric problems, but, <clears throat> but at the end, I will go through some more questions. So please um, ask any more questions you have on bearings towards the end of the session. 
So let's have a look at problem solving. So problem solving is a big part of your exam for maths. Um, you will be expected to do loads of different problem solving questions on any material which you're um, supposed to know for your exam. Um, the particular material that we're going to go through today is geometric problems. So first of all, in general, with problem solving questions, um, you should go through these um, steps to help you make sure that you get as many marks as possible in your exam. So the first thing that you should do, read the question and figure out what do you have to do. A lot of students with problem solving questions, they start working out things, but they're not actually sure what they're meant to do for the question. Always make sure you know what you need to do. Then figure out what information do you need to get to the answer and um, what information do you not need. A lot of the time, <clears throat> a lot of the time with questions, um, they do give you <clears throat> irrelevant information. So sometimes try not to get caught up with information that you don't need and don't spend too much time on thinking, <clears throat> well, why did they give me this information? Try and concentrate on the stuff that you do need and you do know. <clears throat> the next thing is um, what maths do I need to do? So obviously with geometric um, problems, we're going to go through some of the things you need to know and able to do those things. But um, in general, with problem solving questions, they could be on any type of maths that you need to know. They could be on algebra. It could be on ratio. Um, it could be on proportion, all of those different things. Make sure you know what maths needs to be done. Always check your answer. Once you've gotten to an answer, always check it. Check for units, check um, for three significant figures or decimal places, how you're supposed to leave it. And then the last thing to do is check that you've completed everything. A lot of the time with problem solving questions, they are multiple step questions. There's four or five different things that you need to do. Make sure you've done all of them. So let's um, look at some tips. So read the question twice. That's a good tip um, for anyone who gets um, a little bit confused or um, struggles with doing multiple step questions. Always read it once, try and understand what it means, read it twice and go through and underline the important parts of the question. If you've read the question and you don't understand it, read it again. Make sure you do understand what the question is asking for. Always, always check the units. That is um, a big thing that they like doing in problem solving questions. Always ask you to leave it in different units that they've given you. Make sure you check your units. Um, write all your working out down. Um, sometimes the students, they see questions, they know how to do it, but then they don't write their working out down and they make silly mistakes. And then when they come back to check it, they can't check their question or their answer properly because they don't know what they've done. They've forgotten what they've done always always write your working out down um, double check your work um, so sometimes people go through the um, go through the exam and they come back and check it some people check it as they're going along doesn't matter as long as you are checking your work and also um, this is a tip which um, some people forget as well. Try and make your working out as neat and organized as possible. Now, I would say this is a tip mainly for you and not necessarily just for the examiner. The reason why I say that is, again, a lot of students go through the exam, they do all their working out, perfect, but when it comes back to them checking it, they can't read their handwriting or they can't read where they've gotten certain answers from and they can't check their answers properly. So there's two problems with that. Number one, you can't check your work. Um, and number two, if you can't understand your own work, no one else is gonna understand it either. So make sure that you do try and make it as neat and organized as possible, mainly for yourself. Make sure that you can understand it yourself. Make sure you can see where you've made your silly mistakes. And it does help you in the exam if your examiner can write, can read your um, handwriting as well. And the best tip for um, people who tend to find their um, work quite messy, write with space. I know that it's kind of hard to tell you to slow down. It's an exam, it's timed. But write with um, gaps between your words, enough gaps, and it will be a little bit easier to read it. So geometric problems, there's a few important things you need to remember. Um, a, a few important um, properties of shapes. 
and that you need to remember as well for geometric problems. So lines of symmetry, remember how to draw lines of symmetry, remember what they mean. So if you had a shape, could I fold it in half and then and both sides look exactly the same? Or could I put a mirror on a line and both of these sides, either sides of the mirror, look exactly the same? So you need to remember what lines of symmetry are. A lot of questions do ask you um, about lines of symmetry. You need to remember triangle properties. Those are really important. So remember angles in a triangle all add up to 180 degrees. Remember, you can have different types of triangles. You can have a right angle triangle. You can have an equilateral triangle, an isosceles triangle or a scalene triangle. Um, so remember all your different properties for triangles. Also area, that's something we went through last week and I recapped on this um, earlier on as well. Um, another few properties, perimeters. Remember, that's the length all around your shape area that's a space in between all of your lines in the shape and angles in shapes as well is quite important so with the geometric problems we're going to be going through today i'm going to try and focus more on um, area and perimeter because that's something that i've been covering over the last um, few weeks and um, not so much angles or lines of symmetry um but Bear in mind, you do have to know these things for geometric problems in general. So let's have a look at um, one, one um, example of geometric problem. So here um, we have a right angle triangle and a rectangle. Now the area of the right angle triangle is equal to the area of the rectangle. Calculate X. So use your problem solving steps. First of all, um, Read the question again if you didn't understand it. And um, that's really important to understand it. The next thing to do is what do I need to do? What is this question asking me to do? They want me to find out what is the value of X. Okay, now we need to underline the important parts of the question which will allow us to work out what is X gonna be. So they've told us that the area of the right angle triangle is equal to the area of the rectangle. Those are all important because you need to know what's equal to what and you need to know what exactly are they equal to. Yeah, so we're talking about area. We're not talking about perimeter or anything else, it's area. Now we want the area of the right angle and triangle and we want the area of the rectangle and we know that they're equal to each other. So the maths that we need to do is work in that area. So the first thing that we should be thinking is um, how do I work out the area of a right angle triangle and how do I work out the area of a rectangle? So earlier I did recap how to um, work out the area of a triangle. The area of, if I write triangle up here, the area of the triangle is A times a half times base times height. And then the area of a rectangle is just base times height. Okay, so um, we don't know what X is, so we can't work out the area of the rectangle, but we do know what um, the measurements for the right angle triangle is. So we can work out the area of the right angle triangle. So let's do that. So our base is five centimeters. So we're going to do half multiplied by our base, which is five centimetres, and multiplied by the height. Remember, the height on the triangle is the vertical height, the full height of the triangle, not the slant height. So we're going to use 12 centimetres, not 13 centimetres. We always use the vertical height. Now, um, this is a typical example of um, them giving you information which you don't need. You don't need to know um, that that length is 13 centimetres. Um, they've put that in there to throw you. Try not to fall into the trap. It's not important. It doesn't help us answer the question. So um, we now know um, how to work out the area of the triangle. All we need to do is actually calculate it. So a half multiplied by five multiplied by 12, this will give you 30. 
yeah so you'll get 30 centimeters um, squared so it's area and so 30 centimeters squared is your area of the triangle okay so the next thing that you want to do is you want to now um, work out the area of the rectangle now they've told us that the area is equal in both of these shapes so um, we know that the area of the rectangle is also 30 centimeters squared now all we need to do is work out what is x so we know that to work out the area of a rectangle is base times height so to work out the length of x all we need to do is divide this answer by 30 so 30 i'm sorry divided by 10 so 30 divided by 10 equals 3 so 3 centimeters would be our answer for x let me zoom out as well okay now um we've worked out the answer we've um written our um we've written all our working out um it's all pretty organized i can read it i can understand it the last thing to do is since you finish the question first of all check your answer because a lot of um people go through and they work it out perfect they do all this working out make it all neat but they don't check it and sometimes you make silly mistakes so to check it I just want to check that both of my areas are equal so and um, we know the area of a triangle is 30 and um, centimeters squared half times 5 times 12 is 30 I've used the right numbers done the right calculation now if x is 3 to work out the area of the rectangle it's just 3 times 10 which is also 30 so they're equal so I must have gotten my answer correct I've left it and um, it's given me the units already it's centimeters and they gave us centimeters in the question that's your four marks done and um, that's how you would get four marks for this question so let's see if um there is any other questions so why is there a rectangle so that's just part of that's just part of the question um so hopefully that makes um sense to everyone um, let's go through a, another um, question. Right, so this is another typical um, sort of question that they do ask you when it comes to problem solving. A lot of the time they ask you to do geometric problems, like say work out the area or the perimeter, and then they ask you if I wanted to buy something um, for this particular area or perimeter, how much would I need or how much would I spend? Um, so this is a very very typical question that will come up in your GCSE. So a farmer has a field in the shape of a semicircle um, with a diameter of 50 meters. Now um, the farmer asks Jim to build a fence around the edge of the field and Jim tells him how much it will cost. The total cost is £29.86 per meter of fence plus 180 pounds for each day's work. So Jim takes three days to build the fence. Work out the total cost. Now, if you didn't understand the question, read it again. Make sure you understand the question. Um, the question is, what is the question asking us to do? Well, the question is asking us to find out how much will it cost to build the fence around this semicircle? So um, the maths that we need to know is perimeter. How do I work out the perimeter of a semicircle? It's similar to the recap that we did this morning. Um, so we need to work out the perimeter of the circle and then work out how much it will cost um, to build a fence around the perimeter of the circle. So there's two things that we actually, or three things that we actually need to do for this question. Work out the perimeter of a semicircle work out how much um, the, the actual fence will cost and then work out how much it will cost um, for Jim to work every day. So let's go through and underline the important parts of the question. So um, the diameter of the perimeter, um, the diameter of the semicircle, sorry, is 50 meters. We're gonna need that to work out the perimeter of um, the semicircle. Um, another important piece of information is everything in this box. 
how much the total cost is going to be. So it's £29.86 per metre of fence and it's also £180 for each day of work that Jim does. Now the last part of um, the last part of important information is Jim takes three days to build the fence. So um, what we could do first of all is work out how much um, will Jim charge to make the fence first of all and then we can work out how much would the fence cost. So if I write down um, Jim over here, now if he works for three days and he takes um, and it costs £180 for each day of work, in total it would be three times 180 That's how much he would charge just to do the work. So three times 180 is £540. Now I want to work out the, um, how much the fence will cost. So this part I'm going to just label fence. Now um, you probably realise when I'm working out these questions, I usually put sort of subtitles on each section of work that I'm doing. Um, that's a good habit to get into as well if it helps you keep your work organised. Um, so the first part I did was Jim, so how much will he charge to do three days of work? And the next part I want to do is how much will the fence cost? So in order for me to calculate how much the fence will cost, I need to now work out the perimeter of um, the semicircle. So first of all, I need to work out the arc, the length of this part over here. Yeah, so to do that, I need to work out the circumference of the entire circle and then divide it by two to work out just this arc over here. So the circumference of a circle we know is C equals pi times D or C equals two pi R. Now here they've given us our diameter. So we're going to use C equals pi D. So to work out the circumference of the entire circle, I'm going to do 50 multiplied by pi. And 50 multiplied by pi, this will give you 157.0796. And it goes on a little bit. And let me zoom out as well a little bit more. So we've worked out um, the circumference of the entire circle. Now I want the arc part of this semicircle. Now a semicircle is just half of a regular circle. So all I need to do is divide this by two and then to work out the entire perimeter, I also need to remember to add on that final part because the perimeter is a length all around the shape. So remember what I said before, we want our, we want our answer as accurate as possible. So you've got 157.0796, as long as that's already in your calculator, press A and S and then divide it by two and you'll get the length of this arc over here. So when we divide this by two, we get um, 78, so we do 157.076 and um, divided by two, this gives us 78.5398 um, and it goes on a little bit. Let me write that nine a little bit better. Okay, and then the last thing to do is to add our diameter because we want the entire perimeter around the shape. So we want to do 78.5398. So we press A and S and then plus 50 and you get 128.53. Um, okay, now um, once you have um, gotten that answer, we're still not done. We might have the perimeter of this um, semicircle. We also have the um, cost of how much um, Jim's gonna charge for three days of work, but we don't know how much the fence is going to cost. So here it tells us that the fence um, costs £29.86 per metre. So what we need to do is we need to um, multiply 29.86 with um, how long 
the um what the perimeter of the semicircle is going to be so if i do that here as well so we've got 29.86 because remember our answer is in meters at the moment as well so this is meters so for every 128.53 meters we're gonna um it's gonna cost 29.86 pounds so again i want you to use that ans button um, so 128.53, um, I should also just write the dots as well. So as long as you store it in your calculator, you will get an accurate answer. So we want to press A and S again and multiply this by 29.86. And you should get 3,838.8. Um, one nine eight something and it it will go on a little bit now we've worked out the two different costs now we want the total cost because that's what is asked us to leave our answer in so the last thing to do the absolute last thing to do is to add how much gym will charge for the work and how much the fence will cost so um use the ans button again and add 540 and when you do this, you will get 4,378 points. And remember, it's in pounds and pence. So it should always be two decimal places you're leaving it in. Um, because you can't have 0 0.1 penny, but you can have one penny, which is 0 0.1 for pound, if that makes sense. Always remember that pounds, you're always leaving it in pounds and pence. So it should always, money should always be to two decimal places when you're putting it in pounds. So you should get um, 0 0.20. So it should be 4,000 pounds, 378, and 4,378 pounds and 20 pence. And um, hopefully that makes um, sense. Um, I hope everyone sort of understands um, how to answer geometric um, questions as well as understand a little bit more about bearings as well. Um, if you guys do have any questions, um, please put them in the chat. Um, please put them in the Q&A, sorry. Um, so I can answer them before we go on to do the Kahoot. Um, right, so someone's asked, are these questions in both higher and foundation? Yes. So every, every question that I've gone through so far is foundation um, level questions, but they do ask you these sort of questions in higher as well. Just a little bit more information that you have to do as well for some questions. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully, okay, someone asks, <clears throat> why is it not centimeter squared? I'm guessing you're um, talking about the previous question. Um, the reason why it's not centimetres squared is because, remember, area is always centimetres squared. Um, whereas here, we want the length of X, not the area of X. So the length is going to be centimetres. Um, perfect. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go on to Kahoot. So I would like um, everyone to join in if they can. Um, this is going to be the last thing we're going to be able to do today. Um, I hope everyone can join in um, and participate. If you can't, then please at least try and participate um, at home and try and answer the questions as well um, so you can join in. So I'll wait a little bit um, for everyone to try and um, join the Kahoot session. Um, we might be able to get through the majority of the questions, if not, then um, I'll end it early as well, so we don't go over too long. Perfect. <clears throat> Perfect. So I'll wait a little bit longer. Um, if you can't join them before I start it, 
and I think you can still join in um, halfway through as well. The, um, the pin number will be at the bottom of the screen. So you can join as well if you're not able to do it right now. Um, I am going to start it just because of the time. So let's start. So bearings and geometric problems. So true or false? You always measure bearings from the south line. Is that true or is that false? Perfect, you're right, it is false. Um, it's always from the north line. Remember, bearings are always from the north and you go around um, from the north line. So well done guys, um, for those of you who answered really quickly for that question. Um, next, bearings are measured in which direction? Is it anti-clockwise or is it clockwise? Which direction do we always measure bearings in? Perfect, it is clockwise, it is always clockwise. So once you've measured your north line, you go around clockwise from your north line and you should be able to measure your bearing. So well done, um, well done everyone. So <clears throat> what bearing is east? So is it 90 degrees, is it 270 degrees, 180 degrees or Zero nine zero degrees. Perfect. It is zero nine zero. So some of you did fall for the um trick. Remember, bearings always have three digits. Perfect. <clears throat> so well done, everyone. So which of the following could be the bearing of B from A? Remember, what is your starting point and what's your destination point and how do we measure bearings? Now, this one might be a bit hard to measure because obviously it's on the computer, but roughly, which answer looks correct? Is it 50? Is it 310? Is it 180 or is it 90? Perfect. <clears throat> it is 310 and that one looks around right. The reason why is because if we look at it quickly, you have to measure from your north line and you have to measure clockwise all around until, um, oops, all around until the other line. So it's around 310 degrees. Perfect. Cool. So uh, someone's named themselves COVID-19. Okay. So true or false, bearings must also um, must always be given as three digits. Is that true or is that false? Perfect. Well done, everyone. It is true. Um, it's always in three digits, so never remember that one. Sorry, never forget that one. Always remember that one. Um, perfect. So next one, what is the bearing of B from A? So here they've given us a little help. So how do we measure B from A? What's our starting point? Where's our north line? We measure clockwise. So is it 30, is it 030, is it 180, or is it 210? Perfect, it is 210. The reason why is because you go from the north line, you go clockwise. If we go clockwise, we go um, 180 degrees, oops, go 180 degrees, and then we still have to go a further 30 degrees after that to get to B, okay? So um, the leaderboard is changing a little bit. 
um, we do have time for a few more questions. So this one's a little bit longer and it is a little bit um, more difficult. So a square has an area of 81 centimetres squared. What is the length of one side? Is it six? Is it nine metres? Is it nine centimetres? Or is it 40.5 centimetres? So there's two things that you need to do here and be careful with. Perfect. So some of you did fall for the trap as well. So um, it is nine centimetres. Remember um, your area, it tells you it's 81 centimetres squared. So your length should be in centimetres, not metres. So all you need to do for this question is um, work out the square root of 81, which is nine, because the area of the square is base times height. And remember, squares have all the same sides are equal. So it'd be nine times nine gives you 81. Okay, let's, um, yeah, we've got enough time. So COVID-19 is at the top. <laughs> um, let's see um, whether he keeps um, his position. So this one is worth double the points. It, um, you do have a minute and a half to do this question. Try and not rush it. Um, <clears throat> and be very careful. Read the question properly. The area of the large square, A, B, C, D, is four times the area of the shaded square. What is the value of X? <clears throat> so figure out what do you have to do? What maths do I need to do? Um, and what should my answer um, be? And once you've figured out what the answer is, always make sure to check it. So if you, um, if you have finished early, make sure that you do double check your answer. Make sure that um, if you try it, it works. And make sure you haven't made any silly mistakes as well. Cool, so it is three. So if I um, get it back up again quickly and I explain it. So um, the large square ABCD is four times the square, the smaller shaded square. Now the smaller shaded square has an area of nine because we've got three times three, base times height. Yeah, so we've got three times three, which is nine. Now the larger square would be um, four times it. So it would be 36 centimeters squared. And then we have to work out what is um, the length of um, each side of the larger square. Now 36, if we square root it like we did with the other question, we get six, but six is not our answer. The reason why is because that is the length of the entire square. I just wanted the length of X. So the final thing that you would have to do is do six minus three and you would get three for your value of x. So well done. Um, so well done to everyone who did sort of get to the last part, but also well done for everyone else for participating and trying the question. So um, we've got, I think we've got two more questions left. Um, so we'll quickly try and go through those as well. So this one is also worth double the points, is a longer question. You've got a longer amount of time to answer it as well. So <clears throat> read the question, read it twice, understand what it's asking for, try not to rush and be careful for, um, be careful of silly mistakes and make sure you've answered it and checked your answer. So the area of a rectangle is twice the area of the triangle. What is the width of the rectangle? So what maths do you need? Um, 
make sure you check your answer. So would it be 4.5, would it be 2.25, would it be 6 or would it be 9? Perfect, it would be 4.5. So um, the main thing to do was work out the area of the triangle, like what we did earlier, and um, make sure that it's half times base times height. Multiply it by two um, to work out the area of the rectangle. So nine times eight times a half is gonna be 36. Multiply it by two to get the um, area of a rectangle, which is 72. And then the last thing to do would be divide it by 16 to get 4.5. So well done um, to everyone who did that. And the last question, um, the last question is not too long at all. Um, so the formula for a square, rectangle and parallelogram is A equals base times height. Is this true or is it false? Can we use the same formula to work out the area of all three of those shapes? Perfect, it is true. So for a square, for a rectangle, and for a parallelogram, all of them use the same formula base times height to work out the base of the shape and multiply it by the vertical height. So the last thing, let's check out the podium. Let's see you came in third place. So we've got this volcano, well done. Second place, we've got Mr. Anonymous, well done. And first place we have Black Heart, well done. And well done to first, second and third place. Well done to the runners up and well done to everyone else for participating. I hope that um, it has made a lot more sense to everyone with um, geometric and um, bearing problems. So that brings us to the end of the session. Um, I don't think... I um, don't think there is any more questions um, for today. If you do have one um, that you really, really want to ask, um, try and put, put it in um, quickly, I guess, and I'll try and answer it as quickly as possible. Um, if you do um, want some more personalised um, one-to-one sessions, um, um, private tuition with anyone, please do check out the tutors on my tutor. I'm there. There's loads of other brilliant um, maths tutors there as well. You'll be um, eager to help you guys out. And if you do have any other questions, um, don't feel shy to bring up my tutor and ask them as well. So Brilliant. Thanks, Evelyn. Um, I think we'll end there because it doesn't look like there are any other questions. Um, we've got one more tutorial today, which is biology um, on photosynthesis. So brilliant. But, I hope um, that... Um...